Hi, I'm Tracy Pierce. Thanks for joining me for this Live with the Animals video series. So this series was born out of what was happening here in the United States in March of 2020. Coronavirus had showed, showed up, shelter in place orders were coming down the line, quarantine, all these kind of lockdown measures were happening. And I became really curious about what the animals thought about all of this. And my animal friends kept pinging me like, hey, Tracy, do this video series. And it just evolved from there. I talked to a lot of domestic animals to begin with, and it's right now we're kind of in a phase of talking to more wild animals. And it's really just been a lot of fun. So thanks for joining us. And today we have a very special guest. I have a story about this, a story or two about this magpie actually. So today we're gonna to be talking with a black-billed magpie. And you know, the only, I, you know, I'm not super well traveled, but I, the only place I've seen these magpies is in Colorado here. And I'm, it's possible they live other places, but to me, they, they really stand out here. They're a really beautiful bird. So the funny story here is, so I took this picture and, you know, oh, I was so excited. Oh yeah, I really wanted to talk to the magpie and I uh, got the picture and and so then the next day this I, I noticed outside my sliding glass door there was this magpie that kept showing up and just chat 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 like making all kinds of noise and just being it was almost like he was harassing me and I was like what you know what I took your picture we're gonna talk don't worry we'll talk and then the next day the magpie shows up again it's just like squawking at me and I realized, so part of my, my, my system that I do is if I take a picture of a, an animal that I feel wants to talk with us, I'll take the picture and then I'll email it to myself so I don't forget and I can, you know, that way I put the animals in the queue of who I'm gonna talk to next. And well, I have forgotten to email this picture to myself. <laughs> and so as soon as I emailed the picture to myself, the, the magpie went away and has not been harassing me since then, but I got up this morning and there were seven magpies outside. So I, I get the impression they have something to share with us. So I'm excited to talk to them today. If you're joining me live and you have questions for this magpie, if you're on Zoom, you can use the chat button and type your questions in. If you're on Facebook, just use the comments and type your questions for this magpie in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get quiet and start tuning into this magpie. So it is reminding me, and this was kind of coming through yesterday. I was, I was with a friend and I, I told her this story of the magpie being squawking at me. And um, again, this, this magpie is reminding me of what it was telling me yesterday, which is sometimes in order to get what you want, you, you do have to be this kind of squawking bird and not be afraid to sound like an idiot or to sound, you know, for people to think that you're <clears throat> being a squawking bird, essentially, it's okay. And sometimes that is what it takes to get what, it, what you want. That's not my entire message, but it is one of my specific messages to you, Tracy. And there may be, there may be other people listening to this who, who need to hear the same thing. It's like, I, I didn't care that you were annoyed by me. Um, I, I kept speaking until I got my message through. And it's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't care what you thought. And to some extent, that may be important um, for, for me, for me, Tracy, or for other people who are <clears throat> going after things they want. <clears throat> wow, I start to feel a lot of <clears throat> stuff moving in my own throat. And the magpie says, yes, there, there's sometimes a lot of people have, <coughs> ooh, excuse me, like fear caught up in their throat. I'm starting to feel a lot of kind of crunchiness in, in my throat as the magpie is showing me this. <coughs> Saying there's a lot of people that have blockages in their throats. 
it's complimenting me saying, Tracy, you've worked on this a bit, you know, you're, you're better at speaking up about things than you definitely used to be. But that's a lot of what my, my message is about speaking up. It's not the entirety, but <clears throat> for, this, for this group in particular, there is something about that. This, this magpie says, we are generally like the magpies. These magpies are known or thought to be quite annoying. <clears throat> um, this magpie says, yeah, a lot of, a lot of humans uh, tend to think of us as nuisance birds. She said, but we don't care. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Is there more you want to tell us about, about that or? So the, the magpie is showing, um, sometimes it's very on its own, it's very solitary, doing its own thing. But sometimes it is in, in groups, like we saw this, like I saw this morning around my house where there was like seven of them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the magpie is showing like, I think, I think part of what happened was um, the neighbors may have spilled some, some grain or some kind of food uh, next to the barn there, because that, that's where these magpies were. They were, they, it was like they were eating, it's what it seemed like. <clears throat> it's like sometimes we come together for, for things like this that, that are mutually beneficial, but a lot of times we're, we are just on our own. So he says it's not unlike a lot, a lot of animals. Um, I feel like there, there's more there. So sure, there are there are a lot of animals that are that are really just herd kind of animals or flock kind of animals. They always they always have their group around. And this magpie is saying we, we kind of go back and forth. Like we tend to be more solitary than than groups. Like the things we do together are more like this mutually beneficial, like, oh, we saw food and, and like, were the other magpies like sharing that they, sharing with other magpies that they had found food? Is that, cause I almost, I almost get the impression that magpies might be a little um, like selfish isn't quite the right word, but um, really concerned about themselves and not, necessarily wanting to bring the other birds in is that is that not correct or we certainly want our species to survive and so in in the situations where there is plenty of food for all of us um this magpie is showing it's like one or two of the magpies found the food and it's it's it really is telepathic communication like it's he's showing like these um, waves kind of coming out of the brain and going out to other magpies so they they come and eat as well. There is a sense of taking care of each other even though we are quite independent. I feel like that this magpie feels like that humans could learn a lot from uh, the way magpies interact with each other. Like we are quite solitary and we can take care of ourselves but we do take care of each other as well. So what else do you want us to know about you or any kind of magpie wisdom that you, that you want to share with us? So it's showing that squawking kind of sound it makes again. <clears throat> wow, I'm starting to feel that in my throat again. But it's showing, it's almost like I see these, it's similar to what it was showing with the, the te telepathic communication it was sending out to other magpies. It's showing a similar thing kind of happening to humans where <clears throat> it's sending its message. It almost seems like it's coming from the center of the magpie's brain towards like the center of the brain of a human. I feel like you're showing me something about 
dreams. Um, could you could you show me that again? Is is this all about dreams or? <clears throat> so this magpie says sometimes when animals come to you in dreams, it may mean different things than when they come to you in person. <clears throat> okay, do you have any like advice for us how to like discern that? I mean, because me personally, I, I hardly ever remember my dreams. Um, so I wonder, is, is there a message you have for people who do remember their dreams about this or? It tends to be not so um, direct is what it's saying in dreams. It tends to be more, it's almost like, she, so the bird is showing like you'd have to write down everything of your dream and it kind of creates this motion spiral thing of how the dream entirely fits together. Um, so how is that different from like seeing the magpies in, in person or seeing an animal in person? The dreams tend to be more of a mystical kind of nature is what the magpie is saying. It, it takes some, a, a different level of discernment. Okay, so, hmm. I'm not sure I 100% understand. So it's showing like, okay, so when the magpies came to me in person, it was a very direct kind of message. Like, listen to me, you're not doing this. Listen to me, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna annoy you until you listen. Um, whereas it, yeah, it's showing, it's, it's almost like the, the coming to in person, it feels more direct. There's more of kind of this pointed kind of thing at the person. Whereas, uh, the dreams, it may be a bigger message that requires some like sitting with it or, or meditation kind of thing. Um, that's what the magpie says. It just feels like in person is much more direct than in dreams. I think we have a question pop up here. <clears throat> How can we better know and understand what message an animal is giving us when we see them? So the magpie says usually whatever the first impression is, that you're getting that usually has something to do with it. Um, <clears throat> is, I feel like there's more there. It, can you expand on that? So the, the, the magpie is encouraging us to pay attention to like the very first thing that happens in our energy or the very first thought that we have, or yeah, the very first kind of thing that happens or image that comes to us or word or feeling like that first thing that comes to you what magpie says is actually quite important a lot of what animals the the messages that animals bring are very heavily reliant on intuition and so the magpie says the more you try to logic things out or reason them like oh the bird came to me for this reason like the more you try to create a story around it, uh, the more kind of bullshit it's going to be basically is what the magpie is saying. Um, animals touch us on this, this deeper level where it's almost like we may not be able to put it into words, but when their energy comes and touches into us, there is something that happens. And it is that that's something that happens right away that people want, um, want to experience or want to really pay attention to in the beginning. Okay, that, that makes sense to me. Is there, is there anything more around that? So the bird, the bird's saying, it, especially if a particular kind of animal shows up repeatedly, uh, to take note of like the time and situation, like what were you doing? What was happening when that animal showed up? 
and the, the magpie is saying sometimes it is like connecting the dots like if you don't understand the first time the animal shows up it's a good idea to write down what you were doing and just any thoughts that may have come through um, Yeah, but if it is a situation where an animal is showing up multiple times, you may have to do a little bit more connecting of the dots where it becomes more like a dream. But sometimes it's just saying like the animals, like there's one animal that really comes at one time forward. And um, again, paying attention to that first thing that's happening in your energy. So it's reminding me um, of some interactions with horses that I have had. Um, my own personal experience, I got, I got bit by a horse when I was about 10 or nine and it kind of, um, created some trepidation in me of horses. So this, this, uh, the magpie is reminding me of like one of the first times I went and to go hang out with horses again after this incident had happened and I saw one horse approach me and I could feel like Oh, my energy, I felt scared. Um, that was something for me to really pay attention to and look at further. Animals tend to trigger these little energetic things in, in your energy, it says, and <clears throat> the more aware we can be of how um, the energy feels when it's, the animal's energy feels when it hits us or how it touches us can um, really help us get those messages a lot better. Okay. okay, so Kim says that she feels a really strong resonance with the magpie, but she's not sure why. Is there anything the magpie can say about this? So I'm kind of pointing, I'm pointing the magpie a little bit towards um, Kim who's asking this question and he's, it feels like he's kind of looking at her. So what the magpie is pointing to Kim has to do with um, your background in shamanism showing that this magpie the magpie also has very strong messages for you in your dreams is there something more i think that there's something more there about that so the magpie is asking you to do a journey with with magpie as sort of one of your guides there is something there deeper more that it's wanting to show you. I see this, um, it's like a black and blue kind of vortex thing. I am, it's almost like this, I see the bird wanting to kind of take you into the vortex. Is there more there? So it's showing, it's, I almost feel like it's showing me a past life of yours, Kim, um, where either you were some sort of medicine man or medicine woman, but it's, it's almost like I see the magpie sitting on your shoulder. Yeah, the magpie is saying you have a, a very deep past life connection to the energy of the magpie that, that's somehow um, woven into the shamanistic tradition. <clears throat> the magpie is saying that that particular past life was a big part of the reason that you decided to um, study shamanism in this life. The magpie is saying the messages that we have for you, it's not something that Tracy could necessarily um, interpret for you. It is something they're asking you to, to, to use the shaman knowledge that you have to actually 
take a journey and, and go deeper. Like there is something it feels like, um, it's like related to your past as a, um, a healer or, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely something more than there, Kim, for sure. We're waiting for you, they say. We're, re- we're waiting for you to take on this journey. Okay, Kim says she, un- she understands, Magpie. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm checking for any last questions. We're kind of coming to the end of our time. Uh, Magpie, is there anything else that you really want to share with us today? You were so squawking and loud. I, I felt like uh, it was just maybe more. So it is bringing forward something around precision. It's, yeah, it's reminding me, I think we talked to the Heron last week who talked a lot about precision. And so the magpie is saying, you know, I talked a lot about squawking and making noise to get the attention that I needed, but there actually was quite a bit of precision. Um, I'm not talking about just going out and blah, blah, you know, like, it's, it's sort of like, it's showing like it's energy just kind of splooshing everywhere, which isn't really necessarily healthy. Um, the magpie is showing like there's a way with this precision element that it holds where it's like, I'm squawking, but I know who I'm squawking at, what I'm trying to get. Like, I'm not just doing it to make noise. Uh, I'm actually doing it for a purpose, and that's where the precision element of the speaking and the squawking comes in. And yeah, so the, the magpie says, "I know, like, there's so many humans that get annoyed with us, but they're not—they're really missing the precision element of what we're talking about." And you know, they tend to think that, "Oh, we're just making noise," but. Um, that's one of the, the lessons that we can bring from Magpie is this precision in who we're squawking at or what we're squawking at or what we're squawking about. Oh, thank you so much. That's, that's a really great message. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, my Magpie friend. It was so fantastic to chat with you today. I'm so glad to hear from you. And thanks to all of our live viewers who joined us or if you're watching later. I hope to join us again. Most of these videos you can find over on my YouTube channel if you missed any and you want to check back in. I hope you join us again sometime. And until next time, take care and be well.